Welcome back everybody, my name is Philip and I do not know if you remember, but I have spent a couple of months in Utah admiring the landscape, because that's what you do. With all these beautiful national parks, there's really boredom is something you do not know when you're over there. So, but apart from the usual spots where I went to all the beautiful national parks and just travel around these sort of most common touristic areas, I also did, well, a couple of trips where I just randomly took a car picked a side street and uh, what the side street picked the country street really and uh, then just got off the car and just hiked through the landscape and the cool thing is that the landscape is so different from what I'm used to because you only have bushes rocks and a whole ton of nothing and what I found there was for instance this very interesting but slightly creepy scenery where I found this skeleton in the middle of nowhere in this really beautiful but kind of dead looking landscape with only scrubs and bushes and nothing else so what I decided is obviously I need to take a couple of pictures, which I did. So today I'm going to show you how I took this quick shot, which I just you know took on the hike essentially, and how I in Photoshop later or right now, uh, how we darken down the sky a little bit. We're going to enlarge the skeleton itself that it's a bit more dominant in the image and then just add a bit of clarity. And that's all we have to do. So before we jump into Photoshop, let's run the intro and then do that. All right, guys, let's get going in Photoshop. Now, this won't hurt and won't take long at all. So let's get going and do it from top to bottom. What I want to start with is the sky. Now, the sky is interesting, maybe, but it's a little bit too washed out, a bit blown out and does not have enough drama for my particular taste for this particular scenario. So let's just get going by adding this bit more drama to the sky. Now, first, I'm going to darken down the sky. So I'm just going to create a quick curve adjustment layer and I'm going to pull it down and I'm just looking at the sky right now and not at the sort of foreground with the skeleton itself. So I'm just going to get it to something like that maybe. And yeah, that's kind of nice. Once I have done that, I'm going to invert that layer mask to hide the effect by hitting Command or Control on the Windows PC and I for Idaho on my keyboard. Now this will hide the effect and now I can take a white brush and bring the effect back out wherever I feel like it's necessary. So obviously for me, that's going to be the sky. So me with a very low opacity, I'm just going to uh, the past. No, I'm going to paint that into the image just like that. Okay. And I'm obviously going to be a little bit fast here. So I'm not going to take great care that I don't go over the edge uh, because I don't really mind in this particular instance. But usually you want to make sure you use the proper brush settings, like have a proper flow set up and all these kind of things. But for us, let's just bring it down to something like that. That's not bad. I kind of like that. So if we switch it back off and on, we can see we have already added a bit more feeling to the sky itself. Now we could theoretically also darken down certain parts of the foreground, but I would, I would rather keep that for a little bit later in the well, in the well, processing, I suppose. So the next thing I would like to do is I would like to add some clarity or enlarge the skeleton first. So I think in this case, let's just go for it and let's just increase the size of the skeleton a little bit. We're going to use a little bit of a trick because we can. So what I'm going to do is first, I'm going to copy everything that is, that is currently visible, including the new um, curve adjustment layer onto a new layer. So I'm going to on my keyboard hit con uh, command or control Alt, Shift and E to create what is called a stamp visible. And that does nothing else than copying everything that is currently visible onto a new layer, right? So now I have this new layer right here in the right corner. So with that, I'm going to hit the L key to get my lasso tool. And I'm going to draw a selection around the uh, nearly everything of the foreground, except the, the word is gone except the uh, the ledge here, you know, the, the edge, the horizon, uh, however you would call it, this part. So once I have that, I'm going to hit Command or Control and J on the keyboard to bring only this part onto a new layer. So now if I hit the V key to, uh, to get my move tool, you can see I can theoretically can start moving this around if I wanted to. So I'm not going to do though, because I want to leave it exactly where it is. So once I have that, I'm going to hit Command and T on the keyboard, which brings up my transform tool. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. And now again, we are using many key combinations today. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hit command and control, no command and alt and shift on my keyboard, drag one of these corners and drag it outwards. And you see, if I do that, it's going to perspectually, if that is an English word, hmm, it's going to, going to sort of increase the size or sort of shift the perspective 
of the selection we had, which was the foreground. So I can drag it a little bit larger to maybe, not too crazy, but maybe something like, something like that is not bad. Once I'm happy, I can hit enter and it's gonna do it. So let's select the brush and let's switch that on and off. If we switch it off, we can see obviously it's way smaller. If we switch it on, the skeleton just becomes way more dominant in the image because it takes up more space, which is kind of what we need. Now we also have to take care that we don't create a hard edge at the back here, but I think it looks actually really good and really natural. Kind of proud of myself here for the speed, not bad. So now that we have the slightly larger skeleton, I wanna add two more things. First, a bit more clarity, and secondly, a little bit of movement to the clouds in the sky. And maybe actually, let's start with the sky, because why not? So what I'm gonna do, or what I need to do is, I'm gonna apply a filter, which blurs the sky from the center outwards, okay? And it's gonna give the impression that there is a certain movement in the clouds. Now, for that, I'm gonna use another stamp visible. So like before, I want to copy everything that is currently visible onto a new layer, and I do that by hitting Command or Control, Alt, Shift, and E on my keyboard. Perfect. With that, I'm gonna to go to Filter, Blur, and then down to Radial Blur. Here, I just wanted to switch it over from Spin to Zoom. Mm, 10 is maybe not too bad, so let's leave an amount of 10. Uh, however, we kinda of have to change the center a bit. So the center would kind of determine from which point you blur outwards, right? So right now it was in the center, so I'm gonna move it over. Uh, it's a bit of a try and error, but I kind of over there. So maybe here-ish? <laughs> Let's see, I like that part because it's fun to give it a try. And oh yeah, that's okay, could be worse. We could blur it a little bit more, but I think actually for our purpose, we keep it a bit more subtle. So. We're gonna pop a layer mask on that because I don't want the effect everywhere because I'm just going crazy if I look at the foreground. Uh, I think I'm gonna get an epileptic attack or something. So let's put a layer mask on that. Hide that layer mask, not hide the layer mask, hide the layer or invert the layer mask by hitting Command or Control and I on the keyboard. And like before, with a white brush, I can now bring the effect in wherever I feel like. So I'm gonna bring it in in these sort of edge areas of that sky. And just ever so slightly, not too crazy, Maybe something like that is already enough. So that we have the slight sort of sensation of movement in the outer parts, but a more stable view in the very back right there, okay? And I think that's actually not bad. So let's add some clarity and then darken down the sky and we are already done. The clarity adding is extremely fast. One more stamp visible, Commander Control, Alt, Shift, and E, as I have said five times already. I'm gonna go to Filter and then Camera Raw Filter. And once this has opened up, here we are, now we have a slider in the lower right, which is the clarity slider. Now, moving the slider to the left makes the image more dull. Moving it to the right, however, it's gonna crunch up your image like a beast. So be careful not to overuse this particular effect, because some people just go in here, they crank everything up to the right and kind of, you know, it's amazing and uh, clap your hands. But it often makes images look a little bit too unnatural. So in my case, I'm just gonna go with something like maybe something like that is already enough. Hit the OK button and it's gonna apply the effect to this particular layer. Alrighty, and if we switch it on and off, or rather off and on, we can see we get a bit more clarity in the image, which is really, really cool. I like that a lot. Now, we could remove it from certain areas if we didn't feel comfortable with the effect being everywhere, but I think in our case, I'm happy with that, why not? So next thing, and actually last thing, is I wanna darken and lighten certain areas. And usually you wanna really take your time with like dodging and burning and stuff. I'm just gonna quickly grab a curve adjustment layer. I'm gonna bring it down to maybe something like that is not bad. I'm gonna invert that layer by hitting Command and I, or rather the mask on it. And now with a soft brush, what a soft brush? Well, with a brush and 20% opacity, I'll just bring that brightness reduction into certain areas of my image. For instance, including this area right here. It's a bit too shiny for me, to be honest. So let's just bring it down just a little bit. Also this edge right here, and maybe this edge right there. Also, with, with the lizard words, with a very large brush, I'm just gonna paint in a little bit of that darkness in the sky area right here. Because I think it's gonna fill the sky a little bit more, making a bit more clouds visible, if you want. And uh, that will look way better. Cool. Let's have a look in the before and after. Yes, I do like that. That is pretty neat, especially in the sky. Big fan. Now I'm gonna do the opposite thing. No, I don't want that. I'm gonna do the opposite thing, but actually light in certain areas. Not a lot, just a little bit. Maybe something like that is not too bad. 
and I'm going to hide that one as well. And now I'll just bring the brightness out only in the area with the skeleton itself, just right here. I'm doing that so that subconsciously, hopefully, the attention is a bit more sort of focused on this part first or on the sky first and can then wander around, right? So if we look at the before and after, very subtle, but it just brings out that middle area a tiny bit more. And I'm actually quite happy with that. Now, if you wanted to, we could also take some color out because I think for the kind of scene we have, the more color we have, the worse the image looks. So let's just bring it down maybe to something like that and also hide that because I don't want to take all the color out just from certain areas. So maybe let's take it out here a little bit, also over here a little bit, make it a bit smaller and just go over like that. That's perfect. Of course, at the edges, there is no attention needed at the edges whatsoever. And that's awesome. And if we felt like we could put a colorful spot in here or there, because why not? So if I increase the saturation and I'm only looking at this particular flower or bush or whatever it might be right there, okay? So if I'm just gonna increase it to something like that, I'm gonna invert this and now I'm gonna bring that in. I think it's gonna be like a nice spot of just a little bit more color in the image to keep things interesting. Huh? And maybe this one right here. Okay, that's not bad. I'm kind of down for that. Now we could also, if we felt like, make sure the skeleton is a little bit more visible, okay? So if you wanna take the time, you could take another curve adjustment layer, increase the brightness, and then only make the bones brighter. And this will sort of make them pop a little bit more, okay? That's something you could do. You could also go and use one of the Nick Collection filters called, uh, I think, Tonal Contrast or something like that. This would do the exact same job, but uh, I think in my case, I'm actually quite happy the way it looks as of right now. And yeah, I think we are good to go, people. That was incredibly easy. Let's have a quick look here from beginning, very dull, not dramatic, no dramatic sky whatsoever, to something really, really cool, dark, spooky, yeah, well, spooky, maybe the wrong word, but definitely not a cheerful atmosphere at all, all right? And that's exactly what I wanted to go for in this image. And within a couple of moments in Photoshop, we are already done. And there we go. Within just a couple of moments, we went from a rather dull image, which granted was a bit of a creepy scenario already, but uh, because of the post editing we could do, we now made it to a properly creepy, dark, sort of, sort of sad scene. And sometimes that's what you just have to do in photography. You just want to convey a certain message. And I felt creeped out and sad, so I might as well convey the same message in my image. Adding a bit of drama, adding a bit of that clarity to the image can do a lot for us. Now, if you did like the video, do not forget to hit the thumbs up button. And also, if you're new, don't forget to subscribe. It's going to help me out a lot. Other than that, I shall see you the next time for a tutorial, vlog, whatever might uh, be in the queue. And you have a good one. Bye.